Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to Zatcast technical workshop for the national e-invoicing solution. This is going to be a series of workshops where we'll go in details about the phase two requirements of e-invoicing. This specific workshop we're going to have a quick introduction to e-invoicing and then we're going to have a look at the two different e-invoicing modules. Later on we're going to have a quick recap about what are the phase two requirements for e-invoicing and then finally we will have a look at what are the most common CSID or cryptographic stamp ID business scenarios. So as a quick introduction to e-invoicing, um, back in 2020, 4th of December, we have announced the e-invoicing regulation and we publish it over the website. And then in May 28th of 2021, we have published the implementation resolution of of e invoicing so we have published the controls the requirements the technical specifications and procedural rules for implementing the provisions of the invoicing regulation later that year on the 4th of december of 2021 the generation phase kick started and we started enforcing uh, our taxpayers or vat taxpayers to start generating invoices in electronic format and then in july 1st of 2022 this year we have announced the first wave of integration uh, of e-invoicing, which will start the enforcement in January 1st of 2023, and then subsequent phases or waves will come after that. So what was phase one? So phase one, we call it the generation phase, which was started enforcement back in December 4th of 2021. Here exactly what we are doing is that we are uh, asking our taxpayers or VAT taxable persons to start generating and storing compliant tax invoices in an electronic format. So basically move away from the manual uh, way of generating invoices like in paper base and make them generated in, in, a, in an electronic format. Of course, generation including storing and then adding some specific fields uh, to the invoice, more, most notably the QR code for the simplified invoices or the invoices targeted for B2C or business to consumer. Now the next phase, which is phase two, which will start enforcement in January 1st of 2023. This is what we call the integration phase. And mainly what we are requiring uh, our taxpayers is to generate invoices in an XML format and store, of course, the set invoices in the XML format. This XML will also include some additional fields, more specifically some uh, security-based fields such as the cryptographic stamp. And then finally, they need to integrate with Zatka's invoicing platform to uh, report their invoices. So this is in a nutshell, what are the, uh, let's say, general uh, differences between phase one and phase two. And our sessions moving on will be focusing about uh, phase two. So who will be subject to implementing phase two? So mandatory integration with that could be done in waves. So we have announced wave one back in July 1st of 2022. Subsequent waves are yet to be announced. And Whenever we announce a wave, we're going to give them a head start of at least six months in advance to prepare the environment to start integrating with Zatka invoicing solution. So to comply with phase two, which is the integration phase, there are four general requirements. So basically the solution or the invoicing solution at the taxpayer side has to be able to connect to the internet, of course, so they can integrate with, with Zatka platform. There are some additional fields required in phase two that they have to be populated in the invoice. Now said invoice has to be uh, generated and stored in an XML format or a PDF slash A3 with the same XML embedded within it. And then finally, they need to integrate their invoicing solution with Zatka to share the electronic invoices. Now more details can be, uh, can be found in our website, zatka.gov.sa. We have a special tab for e-invoicing. You'll find all the uh, technical and non-technical details published there. Moving on, we're going to have a look at the two different models of e-invoicing. So we have two main models. One is called the simplified invoices. and This is where the business to consumer or customer is, is, uh, is happening. Whereas we have a different one, which is for the B2B or business to business, which we call the tax invoices. So in B2B, this is how the model would look like. At the supplier side, they need to generate an e-invoice uh, from their system. And before sharing this invoice, they need to send it to Zatka for clearance. So this is what we call the clearance method or model. Once Zatka clears the invoice, Zatka platform is going to stamp the invoice and then generate a QR code for said invoice. 
once the supplier gets that, they can store this uh, invoice in an XML or PDF slash A3 with an embedded XML format. And then, and only then, they can share it with their buyer. Of course, the buyer has an option to scan the QR code that was present, printed on the invoice against our Zatka platform to make sure that the invoice is cleared and authentic. This is a sample of how uh, a B2B or a tax invoice would look like. You can see here that we have the QR code. We have the invoice type, which is uh, uh, the tax invoice in this example. We have the uh, reference number. We have the, uh, the date time stamp as well. We have the information about the seller along with the uh, additional uh, ID such as the commercial registration number and since this is a B2B invoice we have to have the buyer information as well part of the invoice and then uh, some information about the uh, the goods that were sold or the services and then you'll have the total the VAT amount and then the total with the VAT amount of course there are some additional f uh, fields that are visible and then some fields that are not visible on the printable version. You can find more the details about it and we're gonna have a look at it later on in subsequent sessions. Now when it comes to B2C, this is for uh, businesses who are dealing with, with uh, consumers or uh, end consumers, uh, like walk-in uh, customers. So basically the supplier, they need to uh, generate the invoice and share it in a human readable format with their customers. At the same time, they need to store this invoice at their site, at their machine. And then they will have a grace period of 24 hours to share this invoice with Zatka platform. And this is where we call it the reporting uh, in comparison to clearance that we have seen in B2B. For B2B, B2C, we call it rep uh, reporting since you have 24 hours uh, clearance. Now, this is due to the sensitivity of the time of the transaction between the supplier and the customer. Uh, and of course, we have a similar option where the customer can scan the QR code that was printed by the supplier to check whether this invoice was generated uh, through uh, a registered uh, supplier. Again, this is a, a sample of how the simplified tax invoice would look like. It's very similar to the, uh, the tax invoice or the B2B1. However, you'll see that the buyer information is missing from here. So let's have a closer look about phase two requirements. So we have published a lot of material on our website regarding the requirements. You're gonna have the e-invoicing resolution. You're gonna have the data dictionary, which includes all the data fields and their definitions and what sorts of uh, input that needs to be done for each uh, data field. You're gonna have also details about how the XML implementations look like. And then there is a document for the security features implementation. And then finally, you'll have the API specifications in Swagger format. And for testing and validation, we have published two tools. The first one is the Compliance and Enable Toolbox, which, which is the SDK. This is an offline version uh, to test the compliance of your implementation. And we're going to have a separate dedicated session for that to go over the SDK and how to use it. And then we have also developed an integration sandbox. This is where you can test the integration part of your solution and examine or test your, your solution against our sandbox. This is in a sandbox environment, so it's a, in a test environment, it's not in production. You can use that in preparation for your uh, production environment. And again, we can have a separate session for in the integration sandbox. We're gonna go over the details of the sandbox and how to use that. And then finally, we have dedicated uh, a QR code development guide, just only for the QR code, just to give you a step-by-step a guide on how to develop the QR code to be printed on your invoices. Now this is how we envision the journey of, uh, of our taxpayers or their service providers to be able to be compliant with phase two of e-invoicing. We have four steps in general. The first two are marked as optional. However, they are highly recommended to be done before you start integrating. The first one is the uh, compliance and enable toolbox, as we mentioned, this is the SDK. I'm going to have a dedicated session for that. Basically, this is an offline tool uh, for you to test the uh, implementation of your uh, system against Zatka requirements. 
uh, to access that, you have two options. The first one is to go to the developer portal, which is the sandbox. I'm going to have a look at that. You can either download the SDK and use it in an offline mode, or you can use our portal-based validator. Uh, this is mainly targeted for non-technical users, where you can drag and drop the uh, XMLs to, to validate those XMLs against Zatka requirements. The other option to access the SDK is through uh, our uh, Zatka website. If you go to zatka.gov.sa, we have a section dedicated for e-invoicing, and under that there is a section for developers. You'll find the same version of the SDK as well there, ready to be downloaded. And again, we're going to have a separate session for the SDK to go over it and see how it can be used. The next step, which is the integration sandbox. The purpose of this is to uh, do an actual integration against Zatka in a sandbox environment, which is a, like a test environment, it's not non-production. Basically, you're going to have to go to uh, sandbox.zatka.gov.sa. You're going to have the to navigate to the integration sandbox. And then you're going to have a look at all the API documentation via Swagger. We have six main APIs, the Compliance CSID API, uh, Compliance Checks APIs, Production CSID APIs for onboarding, and similarly for renewal. And then finally, the two APIs for submitting invoicing in a reporting mode, which is the B2C, and then a clearance mode for B2B. And again, we're going to have a dedicated session for the integration sandbox to go over all the uh, useful tools there and see how you can test your, your, your solution against a sandbox environment. The next step is once you make you made sure that you are able to generate an XML in a correct format and you're able to integrate with Zatka, then here you need to onboard your solutions uh, before you start sending invoices. So we have an onboarding portal, uh, fatura.zatka.gov.sa. On that portal, you'll be able to uh, onboard your solution and acquire a cryptographic stamp or a CSID to be able to send your e-invoices. So to access that, you're going to have to go to fatura.zatka.gov.sa. You're going to select how many um, devices that you want to onboard. You'll receive an OTP for each device to be onboarded. Once you onboard the device, you'll be able to uh, run the, uh, the APIs in sequence, which is the compliance first, and then the compliance checks. And then you're going to request for a production CSID. Once you get this production CSID, then you'll be ready for the next step. We're going to have a dedicated session for onboarding portal as well to see how you can onboard your devices and be ready to submit the invoices. Now, finally, once you have onboarded your devices, now and only then you can start send invoices against Zatka invoicing platform in a clearance or reporting uh, model, depending on the type of business that you are dealing with. So basically, if you're using, uh, if you're dealing with a B2B transaction, we're gonna use the clearance API, which is the standard document. And if you're using uh, or dealing with a B2C transaction, then you're gonna send simplified documents in a reporting API. Uh, Zatka platform is going to do the validation and confirm back to you the, uh, the the submission of the of your invoice. And in case of a standard document, as we have mentioned previously, Zatka is going to stamp this invoice for you and then generate a QR code for you to be printed on the invoice. Now, have, let's have a look at what are the most common cryptographic stamp business scenarios. So the very basic uh, business scenario is that we have a taxpayer with a single server that they are generating and sending invoices to Zatka. So in that server, you need to have to acquire a CSID as we have seen in the previous steps. Now, another example is that if you have uh, one single taxpayer with multiple points of sales, each of these points of sales are generating and sending the invoices to Zatka platform. So each individual point of sale will have to have acquiring acquired CSID. So this CSID has to be unique across all of these devices. So no two devices will have the same CSID. So each point of sale will have to go through the steps of the onboarding that we have seen previously. Now, in case the taxpayer has a centralized server where they are issuing and sending the invoices, so the point of sale here is not generating or sending. They are actually getting the invoice from a centralized server and then sending the invoice from the centralized server to Zatka uh, invoicing platform. So in that case, the point of sale does not have to have CSID. Only the centralized server will have a CSID. 
since the centralized server is issuing and sending the invoices. Now another example is that where the point of sale is actually issuing but not sending. So the point of sale is issuing the invoice and then sending it to a centralized uh, server where this server is sending it to Zatka. So in that case, each single point of sale will have to have a CSID to generate the invoice. And then the centralized server who is going to send the invoice to Zatka is also required to have a CSID. So the difference between this example and the previous one is that the central server in this case is not issuing the invoice, it's only sending. Whereas in the previous example, the same server is issuing and sending the invoices. Now, a bit more complicated example is that, for example, if you have a taxpayer with multiple branches, each branch is having, a, a, let's say, a dedicated server internal in the branch, and then they have like a, a regional server or a central server to, to consolidate all the invoices and then sending it to Zatka. So in that case, if the point of sale is not issuing or sending an invoice, so they don't need to have CSID. However, the local or the, let's say, branch server is, is, is issuing an invoice but not sending there. So in that case, they will have to have a, a unique CSID per server. And then finally, the centralized server, which is sending to Zatka, would need to have a CSID. So as a general rule of thumb, any machine that is either issuing or sending to Zatka would have to have a CSID. So this is a quick introduction to uh, Zatka e-invoicing solution. Um, subsequent uh, workshops will, will, will go over the, the tools that we have mentioned. We'll have a workshop for the, the SDK, another one for the integration sandbox, and then finally we'll have a workshop on the onboarding. Thank you very much.